Welcome to create events for a business type. Before getting started in this, you need to give careful thought on what type of workflow uh, or office events you'd like for a business type. Now, you can always go back and change them, but you kind of need to sketch this down probably in a piece of paper just to determine what's important, what do I really want to track. Um, so once you have that determined, you're then going to go to your admin, go to event status, and all your business types will display here. So what you want to do is then go to the new business type, which we just created. was called health insurance. So nothing will display. The very first thing you want to do, select from the drop down. And these are all the system event statuses. So this will be, and this is kind of targeted a little bit toward tax preparation. So you want to pick the event status that, uh, well, let me go back to your home page real quick, and I'll show you what I mean. Say I go into drop off. So if I wanted to, if I like what displays here in my column headings for drop-off um, for a specific event that I'd like to display for health insurance, then I would, for my system event status, I would select drop-off, and then I would just change my name and the custom status. But these columns will display if you select the system event drop-off. So when I go back to admin, I go back to event status, health insurance, and right there is drop off so if I like the column headings that display for the the system event drop off then I would select that and then I would type in my what I actually really want to call it on the health insurance side but just want to kind of explain how that works um, first step is what you should always do when you're creating a event status for a business type is you want to start with the lobby because Adam does default whenever you add a new client it automatically triggers the event status lobby even if you don't have it displaying here so you always want to start with that and we just would call it I'll go to business type health insurance and I'm just going to call it setup because they may not be walking in my lobby so in this case I'll do setup ordinal I'm going to put zero because it's always my first one recurrence days I don't have to worry about that notification days I don't have to worry about any of this so I'm just going to hit save so I'm um, that's my setup this should always be the case for every event status you build for a business type. Always start with the lobby. You don't have to call it setup, but you always want the system event status to be lobby. Then next one, I'm just going to go ahead and with health insurance as of right now, I don't believe I have too many event statuses. I'm going to use our new event status miscellaneous event due date just because I know it has a, um, some due dates I can use in there. So I'm going to select this as my system event. Again, health insurance, and then I'm going to call this one um, contact immediately all right maybe they don't have insurance at all so I'm gonna put my ordinal I'm gonna put a I'm gonna put a five okay and I don't have any reoccurrence days notification days anything like that and the reason I have a five is that uh, and just in case I need to squeeze something in between the two I have a cushion there from zero to five so I wouldn't put zero one two three four five because Normally, building event status is an ongoing project, and it changes all the time um, as the needs for your clients change. So you want to give yourself a little cushion there. The next one, I'm going to come down here and build another one. Again, I'll select event due date, second one, and health insurance. And I'm going to call this one contact in, say, 30 days. Maybe they have a policy, but it's expiring or something, and they don't need immediate contact. So now I'm going to save this. And then next one I'm going to call um, follow-up health insurance. So maybe after I make a phone call, then I need to follow up with them. And I'll put 15 on that. And I don't have to worry about any kind of notification days or anything for this type of business type. The reoccurrence days would be more for your bookkeeping side. So say as we, um, under the bookkeeping workflow, I spoke about uh, 941 preparation. So what I'd put in the recurrence days under that would be 90. So that would mean whenever I complete that task, 941 preparation, 90 days from now, I'll be notified again, and that'll automatically display on my home page. So that's usually I think the recurrence days is probably going to trigger around um, bookkeeping side, but it could also trigger, I guess, in the tax prep side if, say, you had something, a client that you want to be notified um, when they should send their quarterly estimates in you could set up an event status that way and you could again use the 90 days so every quarter you'd be reminded that oh I better give them a call and tell them to send in their quarterlies and, and, and do a calculation for them so that's what the reoccurrence days is for
and notification days. That's just if you want to be notified prior to its reoccurring, you'd put a, a, an amount in there. And then this is all explained under admin set up under event status. So I don't want to get too involved in that. So I'm going to save this. And then lastly, we're going to have complete. Because you, whenever you build an event status for your business types, you always want to have a complete because that means it's done. So health insurance and then the customized name. I'm just going to use complete and then I'll put that as I'm going to do 50 because that's my last one. I save it. Now when I go to my home page under health insurance, this is what I'd see. Now, I think I'm going to add some lines in here to make it a little nicer to view. Um, so I'll go back to like what I mean by lines. If I look at my tax prep, you see how I have lines built in. I'm grouping to make it easier visually to display and kind of have an idea what goes together. So let me go back to my admin. And we don't have a whole lot of event statuses, so it's not too hard. But I'm going to click on event status. Select health insurance again. And then I'll just use anything. Maybe I'll use check pickup. So select health insurance. And I'm just going to draw a line. So I use my shift key. And then the line, draw it across. And make sure you don't draw it too long. Otherwise, there will be too many characters in there. And it will give you an error message. So I'm going to put this right under setup. So I'll put it as two. And maybe I'll group, I'll put a line under contact in 30 days. And again, I'm just going to use declined rail in this case, which means nothing, but it's just an event. So it'll display on my home page. Again, a line, and I'm going to put it as 12. So this is why it's nice to put the, separate the ordinal by at least five. You could probably do 10 or even more than that if you'd like. And then maybe I'll do one under follow up too. So I'll put this one in review, health insurance. Draw my line, and I will label that with a 20, and then I save it. So now when I go back to my home page under health insurance, so kind of group these. So these are normal. I'm going to contact immediately in 30 days. This is a follow-up, and then here's my daily log, which is on every single office event page for a business type. So that is how you would create event statuses for a business type. I will talk to you in a minute regarding creating transaction types. Thank you.